Well, guys, um, congrats, I guess. I'm filming this video in my room, so that means you guys have seen more than most men in my life have seen. Yay. Hey, welcome back or welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mia Dio, and I do TikTok and um, other things. <laughs> I am very talented. I have many talents, which include spending money and spending money. All right, let's get this ball rolling. I, I hate intros. Anyway, I asked you guys to ask me questions on my Finsta, which you could follow right here. And pretty much, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to answer questions, and I'm going to answer questions as direct as I possibly can. So let's begin. So this user asked, was there a point in your life where you struggled with self-worth slash self-esteem? Would love your advice for girlies who struggle with it. Okay, so I guess we're starting off really strong. Let's just rip off the bandage. So this was supposed to be meant to be an intimate video anyway, so I guess I'm going to talk about things that I normally wouldn't even tell my therapist. Because I don't have one. I really do need one though. I used to be the most insecure person ever. It was very bad. I was convinced from a young age that I was ugly and that guys would never like me, but they would want to be my friends. I've always had kind of like a funnier personality, so I feel like that attracted people despite me being an introvert. So a lot of my friends have this saying, Mia never speaks, but when she does, and it's kind of open-ended, you like have to like fill in the blanks, like what happens when Mia speaks? I mean, yeah, like when you think about it, I literally ghosted my friends for the entirety of the pandemic and then I posted one TikTok video during the pandemic. It got like 23 million views. So I guess when Mia speaks, some shit's about to go down. Okay, let me stop trying to evade this question. Um, I used to be really insecure. Growing up, I felt like my looks never were enough for the male gaze. I didn't have boobs. I hadn't developed a womanly body or anything. I had really bad acne. I felt terrible if I didn't have a full face of makeup. Now I'm better. I like now can wear no makeup and love myself. So how did I kind of wake up from being so insecure? Well, it took a while. It took a long time. I feel like I was insecure from the age of 12 when I was actually conscious of how I looked to about the age of 19. So this is going to come as a surprise to most of you, but when I first started TikTok, I was the lowest point that I've ever been in my entire life. Me doing TikTok was literally just an escape. I wanted to pretend to be another person. I wanted to pretend to have someone else's life that I didn't have and have this person's confidence. So when I uploaded my videos, I was completely joking, but all I was doing was kind of manifesting the person I wanted to be. And then by the grace of God, that first time that I really put myself out there and adopt that kind of confident personality was the day that my career started as an influencer. So my advice to you is literally fake it until you make it. How did I do it? I literally just put on this alter ego and I would have this alter ego yell at myself internally to get my shit together. Also, I struggled with looking in the mirror because I just constantly wanted to change myself. I used to be addicted to lip filler. Um, by the age of 17, I had already gotten a nose job because I just hated my nose so much. I really wanted to get like a facelift for some reason. So yeah, back to me struggling in the mirror. Um, I would hyper focus on things that I hated about myself, so I just stopped looking into mirrors. But I eventually got a lot better with staring at myself in the mirror when I just hyper-focused on things that I actually did like about myself. For example, my eyes, they're blue, so I paid a lot of attention to them. I was like, you might have your whole world crumbling, but you have blue eyes. I adopted this mindset. I religiously practiced this mindset. I would just compliment myself on the things that I really liked about myself until all of the things that I hated just didn't really seem big enough to bring me down. So this is a technique that I will actually recommend to everyone. I know it sounds like it probably won't work. It sounds like the equivalent of just girly things, but just trust me on this one. Also never be afraid to project the confidence that you actually wish that you had because confidence to me is a muscle that just needs exercising. If you learn how to strut your stuff, you know, good things happen. Another user asked, what is your biggest project slash dream that you'd like to realize? This question already just gave me so much anxiety because I don't, my life is a mess. <laughs> but honestly, my biggest dream, and I don't feel, I feel like I've never been closer to it in my life was comedy. I've been making comedy content since I was 12, posting it on the internet since I was 14 years old. I've truly wanted this my whole life, but I wanted to actually be a comedian instead of just a content creator. So I guess my short-term goal is to kind of get into stand-up, and my long-term goal is to get on somewhere like SNL 
or be an actress. I really look up to Cameron Diaz as she was this hot girl comedic actress, and I hope that maybe one day my career could be an ounce as big as hers. Another user asked, what did you want to be when you were in pre-K? I feel like since a young age, I really kind of knew what I wanted, and that was to be rich. Didn't have a plan in pre-K. I thought I would be like a professional Lego builder or something like that. So things fluctuate with the times, but I just want to be rich. Because money does buy happiness. Uh, user asks, what are the pros and cons of being the baddest, beautiful, and luxurious sugar baby? So if you guys don't know much about me, or you guys are just randomly clicking on this video, um... I, hi, I am the mother of Sugar Baby TikTok, and I say that very proudly. Started a year and a half ago, took off like wildfire, and I think I literally started, or popularized at least, Sugar Baby humor on TikTok. So there's obviously pros and cons, because being a Sugar Baby has like this negative stigma to it, and a lot of people can't differentiate my content with reality. So in the beginning, when I was doing this and seeing just a little bit of success, um, my family, friends, uh, my partner's family, like they were like a little bit concerned with my content. I guess everyone was just concerned that I was like not going to be employable because I'm claiming to be the sugar baby lifestyle coach. Um, and that's a valid concern, I guess. There's also like a lot of judgment from men because they don't actually see what I'm trying to do with my content. They just see it as a threat. The sugar baby to me is supposed to be this kind of metaphor. Uh, the sugar baby should be all women and her obsession with being expensive or getting expensive things is not necessarily just surface level material. I wanted expensive to be you wanting more for yourself, you desiring the best, the highest standards. Like I've said before, you need to find someone that could afford you mentally, intellectually, and you know, if you want financially, I guess, I'm not stopping you. I never thought I would use this phrase and it applies so perfectly, but the girls that get it, get it. A user asked, how does she make a living in order to have had 100K to spend eating out? All love, no hate. So this comment is actually referring to a post that I did where I showed a snapshot of how much money I spent last year. And you guessed it, I spent $103,000 last year, which is uh, insane to me. I can't believe I did that. I've never been the best at budgeting, um, and I had a lot of fun last year, that's all I have to say. What do I do for a living? I'm a full-time content creator. I work on TikTok, and you know, I have merch and I get Instagram brand deals, and you guys wouldn't even believe how much I charge for some shit. Like, it's crazy. Like, I, there's times that I can't believe how much I charge. I'm like, there's no shot this company is saying yes. And sure enough, enough companies have said yes to have allowed me, a stupid 20-year-old, to at least have enough money to have spent $100,000 last year. If you guys know how much I've declared in taxable income the year before last, I declared like 36 grand and this year I'm spending a hundred. <laughs> oh my god, life is so crazy. It just changed so quickly. Damn, that's nuts. A user asked, where am I from? Um, I was born in Miami, Florida. My mom is Cuban and my dad is Argentinian. I am literally 100% Latina. Um, and I live in Miami, so there's that. Someone asked, what's the best way to find a rich husband? I am not gonna lie, I found my rich husband on Hinge at the peak of the pandemic. I heard that there are still good men on Hinge left. What I did was set my location to like a really nice area in Miami. I set Brickle because it's like the financial district and there's a lot of young professionals. And I was really good at picking up on red flags on dating profiles and then when I would stalk their Instagram, I would make sure that they had healthy relationships with their family. Do they look like they're not broke <laughs> but you never know because in places like miami and la people are hardcore flexors and they'll be broke so it's kind of hit or miss but apart from meeting my rich husband <laughs> i also met like my best friend and i honestly just love that dude like i can't believe i would say this but if he was broke i'd still love him <laughs> so another user just asked is there such a thing as moving too fast with a partner I'm not one to talk. Listen, the, my current boyfriend, we went on one date and then I saw him every single day for like a week and a half before then he decided to invite me on his birthday trip. So I go on this birthday trip with him and by the time I come back, we're dating. And then um, a month later, I cancel my lease in my apartment and we do a four month road trip together. After that, I move in with him after we come back to Miami four months later. 
Uh, and then he gets a house and then we just move in together and now we just live together and we've been dating for almost two years and it's great. Honestly, it's great. So I feel like you move at different paces with other people. If someone's comfortable moving fast and you're comfortable moving fast, then do it. I guess it's all about consent and balance. Someone asked, how do you usually let go of a person and how long does it take to fully be over them for you? Damn, this also varies. Um... Back when I was 18, I had this super toxic relationship that I will probably be telling you about. He would cheat on me, he would put me in terrible situations, but it was so toxic and I thought I loved him. But the thing with toxic relationships is that your brain tends to amplify minimal levels of affection in your mind. So it's not that like toxic makeout sessions hit different. It's not that. It's like your brain is just so desperate to grasp onto any kind of attention or love because you're so deprived that these toxic relationships just become romanticized in your brains. That relationship really wasn't good for me, but I was so obsessed with him and I literally adored him up to like six months after our breakup, even when I was already dating someone new. And that person that I was dating, when I broke up with them, I felt nothing and I got over them instantly. Like I broke up with them and got over it super instantly. Meanwhile, the toxic boyfriend, even though I broke up with him, it took me six months to get over him. And I feel like I was maybe using the guy that took his place as a rebound. Really not fair to him, but I am over all my exes. I could see photos of them and not feel a damn thing. You know you go through a really bad breakup and you think it's over and you're just gonna die and like you're gonna end it all because you're never gonna find someone like that? Yeah, like give it like six months. <laughs> it depends on how messy the relationship was or how toxic it was, the time it will take to heal. But ultimately you will heal. It will happen. You just need to work on yourself. And I know you hear this all the time, but let's start with our self-confidence exercises or let's start beating our face every morning to do something for ourselves or start working out in the morning or at night. Do something for yourself and give yourself more goals that don't involve that partner. And it should speed up the process quickly. Also, I'm a huge advocate for rebounds because rebounds keep you <laughs> from going back to your toxic partner because you feel bad and you don't want to leave them because in your mind you're like, he is not a rebound, but he's definitely a rebound. So maybe like you can use rebounds as currency. <laughs> That's terrible advice. I'm so sorry. It's toxic advice. I'm so sorry, but it works. Someone asked where I picture myself in 10 years. Damn, in 10 years, I'll be 30, almost 31. I don't know, bitch basically dead. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, 30s are prime. Honestly, I look a lot like my mother and my mother peaked physically around 36 years old. So I'm just excited to be in my 30s because I know I'll be so hot. Like if I'm this hot right now at 20 years old, imagine the bombshell I will be at 30 because you know I wear my SPF, you know I take care of my skin, you know I have preventative Botox. I hope to be hot as hell in 10 years. Additionally, I hope to be rich as hell. I want to be an actress. I hope that I'm established. I want to be a comedian. I hope that people respect me. Maybe I can host an Oscars one day. Hopefully I don't get slapped by people like Will Smith. That would suck. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have made fun of Jada because of her medical situation, but like I love making fun of people in general. And so if that will make me a target, bitch, I got to start taking karate lessons. <laughs> okay. Last question. Someone asked one thing for each letter of the alphabet that we should look for in a husband. For example, A, a wealth, B, buffet wallet, etc. <laughs> I will try to do this for you off the top of my head only because I love this comment so much. You deserve it. Okay, look for in a husband. Number one, ass. <laughs> I need a whole lot of in my face. B, bills. I need a guy who's like walking around with a hot wad of cash in case like I... I cry, I can use them as tissues. If I run out of toilet paper, I can use them as toilet paper. I could fan myself with them. There's plenty of uses for dollar bills, so I look for bills. C, credit. I make sure that he's got a good credit and he's got responsible payment histories and he's got a high credit score and he's never gonna struggle in getting a mortgage. D, I'm gonna leave it there. E, extraordinary listening skills, because I love to talk, and I love to talk about random stuff and mostly just about my day, and I'll tell my, my boyfriend, oh, I got my nails done, and then I got my eyebrows done, and then I met this girl, she told me this about her boyfriend, blah, 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 and he, like, pretends to listen, and then goes, that's, that's great, babe. 
I'm so glad that you had a, such a fun, productive day. Meanwhile, he's slaving away at a nine to five and I like posted one TikTok and I'm like, oh, babe, I worked so hard. F, fun. I cannot date boring people. I need someone who's fun. We're gonna do ski trips. We're gonna do summer beach trips. We're gonna do random trips in the middle of the year. I need someone who's fun and flexible. If you work a nine to five in the office, that's annoying. I need someone at home who's gonna tell me I look pretty when I do my makeup randomly just to lounge around the house. It's called atmosphere modeling. Gee, I want him to be gorgeous, but maybe like not that gorgeous because I'm jealous, but my boyfriend's gorgeous. So at the end of the day, I guess I like gorgeous men. H stands for $100 bills because emphasis on bills. Investment portfolio for I. I need the guy with the long-term appreciating assets. J, Jewish. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just describing my boyfriend. I'm not Jewish, but. He is. <laughs> um, I honestly don't have one for K. We're gonna skip that one. L is love because in my mind it's just as easy to love a poor man as it is to love a rich man. So do what you want with that information. That's what my mom used to tell me. M is money, obviously. You know why. I love money. N is no lies. I can't stand liars. I hate lies. If you lie to me, I'll find out. I'll find out everything. <laughs> a, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. P is for pee pee. P is for... Prenup. I don't want one of those. Q is for queen because I need a guy who's going to treat me as a queen. R is for responsible because I am not responsible, so I need a man who is, so I can just count on him. Feminism! S is for successful. I am like a vulture when it comes to people's success. <laughs> I like to hang around with people who have successful energies because it propels me and keeps me from being extremely lazy. T is for tall. Um, I'm five foot nine, so I won't go for anyone that's short. It just can't happen. My toxic ex was short. He just ruined short people for me. They're gone. Cannot deal with short people's attitudes. I can't do it. Women are different. I feel like they're pocket sized. I can put them in my pocket and then ask them for advice or like have them listen in on my gossip and stuff. That's adorable. U is for understanding because of your job. Um, I needed to have a partner who was understanding as to what my job was, even though we started dating and then after we started dating is when I blew up on TikTok and my life changed. So at least he was understanding enough to like let me pursue my dreams and like let this happen because he could have easily been like, I'm not okay with this. You can't do this. And then it would have been the end of me and him. Okay, honestly, let's stop this. The rest of the, the letters is going to require me to think too much. And honestly, I've been working on my feet all day. I'm done with this. Anyway, I hope you guys have an awesome day or night. Remember that expensive is a mindset. Find someone who can afford it. And don't forget to follow me on my Instagram, my Finsta, my TikTok, basically all of my social media so you guys can get the opportunity to ask me a question for the next q and I love you guys so, so much and see you in the next one. Go find a rich husband, baby.